Worms, one of the most amazing creatures in the world. Worms have five hearts in their little bodies. They have ring muscles all around to help them move. In case you hadn't guessed, Pete Rutherford is fanatical about worms. In fact, he's widely acknowledged as a worm farm authority. They are hermaphrodites, which means every worm is a boy and a girl in one. They're just incredible, beautiful creatures. Today, Pete is going to give me a master class in worm farming. Why would I be bothered separating my food scraps and getting one of these worm farms? Right, food scraps in landfill, buried with other garbage, cause pollution. And a worm farm, what's it going to do with these food scraps? OK, it's going to turn it into, into basically worm castings, mate. It's going to turn it back into soil and this sort of stuff. And that feeds your garden. So that's, that's what we're doing it for. You can buy a worm farm like this from most local nurseries, councils or hardware stores. It will cost you around $100 and that includes a thousand worms. OK, that's to catch the water that comes out the bottom, the liquid that comes out the bottom. Now, the, ne the next tray goes on, so, and this is that, you can see that's full of holes, very different than the other tray. This lets the water drain through and the worms move between the trays. We put in a bucket full of nice soil, so... Organic compost, yep. all right. And you, so that's there, that's going to be the home base. Then we get our worms, start off with them by maybe a thousand, they'll breed up. They'll breed up in here to maybe, you know, five to 10,000, somewhere in that range. Then they love it wet. So then we get our water and flood it. And this is really important. We say to people once a week, flood your worm farm, get the water running through it. The worms love it, especially in summer. It's best to leave the tap open all the time because you've got to let the water out. The final tray you need to put in place is the all important feeding tray. Just add a handful of soil and then start adding your kitchen scraps. You can feed them basically anything as long as there's a good variety or diversity in there. The only thing I don't put in a worm farm is meat because it can make it a bit smelly, but I, we actually put everything else in. Incredibly, a worm can eat half its own body weight every day, but even so, Pete reckons the most common problem people tend to make is overfeeding, causing their worm farm to smell. If this happens, just stop feeding them for a few days until the smell stops. Every time you put food scraps in, get a bit of soil out of the garden and put a sprinkling over the top of the food. And now we need to put in um, some stuff called dolomite because things like citrus and tea leaves and fruit make it go too acid, right? And you balance an acid with alkaline. So that's sprinkle it on like, a bit like icing sugar on a cake. Then our lid. When the top feeding tray is full, it means that all of the worms have moved up and that the home tray below is now full of worm gold. So this is, use this on your pot plants or on your garden. It's very rich though, you, can, you can't use too much. Then, all you need to do is move the worms down again and replace the top tray so the process can begin all over again. This is the key, Costa. In the shade, near your kitchen. Watch this, mate. Automatic. Scraps. <laughs> it is automatic. Scraps. There you go, mate.